What's up everyone, Sean Count Blagrath here today doing an examination of the 2017 BMG reissues, Noise has been revived, of um, the first four Celtic Frost albums. Excuse me, the first three and then the fifth album because um, Cold Lake will never be reissued. Uh, I've seen a few videos about this, but there's been some points that a lot of people have left out and some of the annoyances with these reissues. Um, that people have left out, so I'm just here to talk about it. So if you're not interested, fuck off, don't watch. Cheers. Uh, before I really get into this, I'm going to say this. If you want to get them, you can get them off Amazon, but please do not order them all together. I did, and they came ultra damaged. It's the worst easily is, uh... To Megatherion's corner dent. I'll pull it out. Like that bullshit. I had Amazon replace it. But if you don't want to have to go through bullshit to get them replaced, I would highly suggest that you uh, order them all separate. Now, with all that said, we're going to begin with the first one, Morbid Tales. Morbid Tales is a, uh, it was a mini album over in Europe and a full length here in America. Uh, Noise made it a mini LP and uh, took off two tracks and then Metal Blade here in the US added two tracks. This is the full US edition. Uh, it's a double LP set. Uh, original is a single, but uh, the second LP contains uh, some rehearsals and shit like that. There's actually a uh, messiah on here from uh, Hellhammer. I'll show you the back. I will say this about these reissues. They did a great job keeping true to the originals um, in terms of layout. I don't own any of the reissues. The only original copy of Morbid Tales that I have is a... The only original I have of Morbid Tales is this uh, Bonsai cassette. I believe it's... Is this Bonsai? No. Yeah. Yeah, it's Bonsai. Fuck you. It is. It's the only original version of it I have, and this sounds like garbage. And then I also have the 99 CD reissue right here, which sounds alright. But I'm going to say this, this remaster sounds absolutely incredible the drums just pop on this it's absolutely amazing there's so many little details i never really caught on with these albums before these remasters um which is kind of leads me to a rant about these so strap in the part that annoys me about these is the fact that tom's Tom spent the time to remaster these. Of course, Tom G. Warrior, if you're not familiar, and Thomas Gabriel Fisher. Uh, he spent the time to remaster all these albums he, with a fine-tooth comb. I guess there were certain dropouts on certain versions that they wanted to remove. Shit like that, especially, I guess, it was on Into the Pandemonium. There was a lot of dropouts from the last remaster. So, his remaster sounds fucking phenomenal. Amazing. Probably... One of the best sounding LPs in my collection. But his liner notes weren't worthy of being added because he does not like Noise Records for what they did to them in the 80s. But because Noise is being revived, they felt like it would be bad press or whatever. Because Noise was bought up by BMG. Whatever. So they took away his notes, but they used his remasters. And don't get me wrong, I'm glad they did. But I feel like that's pretty shady of them to do. Well, yeah, so I was saying, layout's pretty true to the original. I like that the original record for all of these, except for Vandy Nemesis, all the original tracks fit onto one LP just like the original. So there's the back cover, true to the original, with the red heptagram on the front like the original, and the gatefold is basically what the poster was that came with this. Very cool stuff. Now... You get printed inner sleeves, which is very nice. This is for LP1. On the other side, you have uh, credits, thanks list, all the stuff from the original uh, LP. Then the second one, 
you have uh, Morbid Tales, A Personal View by Xavier Russell. Now, I'll get into this in a second and why it bothers me. And then you have lyrics with some liner notes, so to speak, but nothing really worthy of being mentioned. Very faintly, you can see the heptagram. I dig it, but I'll get to why it bothers me. All these are on black vinyl. Uh, feels like maybe, I don't want to say it's 180 gram. I know it's not for sure. I'm thinking maybe 160 gram, something like that. LP1, all of them have a very similar label style, so this is the only record I'm going to show from these. Another cool thing with these is you actually get uh, two posters with each record. So here's one. Not a big fan of majority of these posters. This is probably one of the few that I actually like that came with them. They feel kind of pointless, and these are very pricey, so I feel like it was just something that they used to kind of jack the price up on them. Because these were about 30 bucks a piece. <sighs> Fucking retarded. I was so pissed when I saw that price, but I had to have them. Um, and then the second poster, which is cool. Pretty cheesy, especially... Over here, I believe that is Mr. S yeah, Steve Priestley with his girlfriend or some random chick. Martin Eric Ain doing his stretches. And Tom just looking like a badass that he is. And then you also get a booklet. Now this is where my grapes come into play once again. The A Personal View by Xavier Russell is a nice touch to include with all these but here's where the problem lies they replace Tom's liner notes with that so the printed inner sleeves already have the lyrics and like little segments of interviews that Martin Eric Ain and Tom G Warrior did back in the 80s and 90s about these songs and just little fragments of quotes from them about each particular song and then there's The Personal View by Xavier Russell. The Personal View is literally an album review. So you have that on the printed inner sleeve, and you have all that contained within this booklet. Now, this is probably the best booklet out of all of them, containing lots of photos, scans of flyers. If I can flip the page. I mean, cool shit, don't get me wrong. It's nice to have, but this repeat information shit is kind of lame. And it, you could tell it was rushed because they had to deny Tom's notes. I love that picture because it's so fucking cheesy. But yeah, I don't know. I think it's kind of lame that they did that. It's a very nice booklet. And all of them are very nice booklets. Don't get me wrong. I just personally think it's kind of lame that they took out the notes for that. But who the fuck am I? Alright, so the second record, and this is basically everyone's favorite, one of my favorites, I personally like Morbid Tales just a little bit more. My favorite album of all time is Monotheist, so in terms of ranking, this would probably be my third favorite Celtic Frost album, but I worship everything they do because they're my favorite band. Anyway, we are going to talk about Two Megatherion. This one, once again, sounds absolutely amazing, but they did something a little weird with this one. Um, I'm just going to explain the layout. It's basically identical to the original, except they actually followed through with what Giger wanted originally, which was he did not want the logo of the band placed on the art itself. Pretty simple demand, but Noise, of course, being the shitbags that they are, slapped it right there on the original. So, there's that, but looks more like some of the uh, Trypticon CDs now, with the little border and just plain font with the title. I like the looks of it a lot. Um, the back, once again, original to the, uh, true to the original. I love it when uh, reissues are very close to the original, if not identical. Very nice gatefold. Of course, with the, uh, I believe this is Victory 2. Victory 3 from Giger, which, fun fact, when he gave the band the rights to use this, he also said he had another painting that he wanted them to use in a gatefold, and this is the one. So they didn't pay for this, which is pretty incredible when you think about it. Um, anyways, um, the weird thing about this one, when you think of Celtic Frost, 
and you think of Morbid Tales, do you think of The Emperor's Return matching with Morbid Tales, or do you think of The Emperor's Return going with to Megatherion? Personally, I think of it with Morbid Tales because of all the reissues throughout the years, and it was recorded within, I think, a one-year time frame of each other. I don't know, I just always consider The Emperor's Return EP to be uh, more of a companion piece to Morbid Tales, but instead it is the second LP contained on this. And then also on side D you have the Visual Aggression 88 remix and Return to the Eve 85 Studio Jam. Personally, what I would have wanted would have been the uh, Tragic Serenades EP to be included on this, because that is more of a companion piece to this record. Because Martin Eric Ain did not perform on this record, but Tragic Serenades does have the same songs, but with his bass on it. Uh, just a fun fact. So I feel like it should have been included on this, but once again, who am I? Once again, same sort of layout to Megatherion LP1 with the credits, thanks list, all that on this one. The uh, personal view by Xavier Russell and then lyrics and notes on this side. Uh, as with the other one, two posters, but this time one of the posters actually makes a lot more sense if I can get it out of this jacket. So you have two posters show the better one. First I'll show the whatever one. This one's cool and all, but it's just cheesy. The lineup with Eric Ain. Disappoints me that he's not on the record, but I mean, that's old news. And then the one that actually makes sense, and it's the nicest poster of all of them, of the Tomegatherion artwork. I will say this, I do like that they have kept this poster format for everything that, is Tom, that Tom has put out uh, vinyl-wise over the last, like, I want to say maybe five years or longer. So Demon and Trails would almost be ten years ago. So, uh, yeah, Demon and Trails started with a poster size like this, Trypticon continued, and now the Celtic Frost ones. I do like that. And then you also have the booklet. Uh, once again, very nice. This time you have the Emperor's Return EP cover. Uh, sound quality wise, as I stated many times, this sounds absolutely phenomenal. I would say this sounds just as good as Morbid Tales. I just feel like some of this stuff is just kind of... I feel like it's a bloated package for no real reason. I guess the original intent was for this to be, like, the definitive final testament to Celtic Frost, but they had to screw it, up, screw it up, but there's a Tragic Serenade EP. So, yeah, I just find it very strange that they didn't include the, um, Tragic, Ser tra 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 tragic Serenades EP with it instead of Emperor's Return, but it's nice to have Emperor's Return regardless. Alright, so next up, and I'm going to say this before I show this one, um, I will do an in-depth discussion on the music coming up in a later video. I want to do, uh, not necessarily a let's talk about, but it's going to be what I'm going to call Evolution of the Warrior, where I'm going to go from Hellhammer on up. So, look forward to that if you're into Celtic Frost. Anyways, the next record of part of these reissues into the pandemonium. Just gonna say this about the music, this is such an underrated album, it pisses me off because it's actually fucking great. If anything, honestly, since I got this, I probably spun this one more than all the others. Uh, the song Babylon Fowl. I fucking love that shit. But anyways, very true to the original, it's not the dark and greenish album cover that was done for the uh, 99 reissues. It's very true to the original press, which I like. Back cover, once again, very true to the original. Uh, this time you have, uh, for the bonus tracks, you have uh, Sorrows of the Moon, which is a Pandemonium Session track, and uh, The Inevitable Factor, which is also a Pandemonium Session track. And then you have In the Chapel in the Moonlight from the Collector's Celtic Frost 12-inch. 
And then you have two more Pandemonium session tracks of one in their Pride re-entry mix, and then the Inevitable Factor with alternate vocals, which I happen to like a bit more than the original. But anyway, so that's back cover. Tom sporting his NASA memorabilia. <laughs> Why? Now you got a nice gatefold. Of course, just like the original. Well done. On uh, BMG's part for the layouts. Then for the printed inner sleeves. This time you got the skull from this era. Which I've always really like a lot of shirts were made with this one only it was a uh, color to match the uh into the pandemonium uh cover and you got the heptagram in the background with uh credits thanks and then of course personal view it's just fucking whatever and then the lyrics in notes quote unquote i'm just gonna say this I don't really want a album review when I buy an album. I don't need an album review to come with said album. And why did my Wattain flag just pop the fucking tack? <sighs> Got the booklet to this one. Very nice. Just like the others. Um, not going to go into too much detail. The Collector's Celtic Frost album cover. Just... Same old, same old from the last one, and then we have two posters. Both are ungodly cheesy, and I got something to say about one of them. There's that one, which is it's a weird time. 80s were weird. And then you have Homie in the back. I believe that's Reed St. Mark, if I remember correctly. Uh, holding probably the biggest set of drumsticks I have ever seen in my life. How do you play anything while holding an actual hammer? That's beyond me, and I just got checked so I don't sound like a dumbass that was... Yes, read St. Mark, I was correct. Fuck you, jabroni. Alright, and then... Another poster. And that would be... Into the Pandemonium. And we're gonna move on now to Vanity Nemesis. Alright, and the last record of these reissues, Vanity Nemesis, their fifth record. Um, Alright, so I'll say this much about Vanity Nemesis, it's better than Cold Lake. It's groovy, it's heavier, um, it's a groove metal record, I mean, let's be honest, I'm not a big fan of it, but I still enjoy it quite a bit, there's some really good songs on here. Layout from what I've seen is true to the original. Um, the only difference is there's the, um, side three actually continues the album with, uh, a kiss or whisper, vanity, and then nemesis on the track listing. Then on the D side you have, uh, heroes, wine in my hand EP track, which is why they would cover heroes, but then again, why did they cover Mexican radio? Because fuck you, I guess. And then, Descent into Babylon, Babylon Asleep, which is also from the Wine in My Hand EP. Uh, Gatefold, very nice actually. I, I think this is a pretty cool picture, I love the uh, contrast on it. Looks fucking sick. And honestly, this is actually a pretty cool album cover, now that I look at it. Anyways, um, let's take a look at what it comes with. Oh, God damn it, I just saw the printed knitter sleeve and... Oh, why? Alright. So, printed... <laughs> God damn it, Tom. Damn it, Tom, why? Why'd you do this? Why? The 80s were... The 90s, apparently. The 80s and 90s were a very weird time for Mr. Fisher because... First... LP has on uh, the printed under sleeve the album cover for the Wine in My Hand EP, which is this. Why? Why? Why was this a thing? Why was this created? It's, I believe it's called the Hellhammer Sonic Demon. No, I'm gonna get up here so you can really 
try to admire the detail on this. This says phallic tantrum. This is CFC Celtic Frost Carnage. Chew this. Uh, what else is it? Uh, you got the Terror Torch. The Hellhammer. Really? Nail them. What else is there? Uh, there's the nuke. Got a nuke. His belt buckle says ignite and he has a rocket for a cock. I don't. Then you got credits and thanks list on that side. Then you got, of course, the personal view from Xavier Russell, because why wouldn't you? Why would you include Tom's notes? Then the lyrics with more notes. Two posters, once again. I mean, I shouldn't be bitching, because, I mean, I've been waiting for these reissues for over ten years, but some of this shit is kind of lame. Two posters, I mean... Who am I lying to? Once I get my own place, I'm gonna hang the frame and hang these posters. Because I am a piece of shit like that. And then, got this poster. And then, of course, the Almighty Booklet, which contains repeat information. If you thought the other booklets were cool, but kind of pointless, this one's just straight up pointless. So here is the booklet. This one is so bare, it's almost embarrassing. Of course, it's got that fucking hell hammer sonic demon, or whatever. I think it says what the name of it. Decibel demon, excuse me. It's the decibel demon. And there's some cool photos and stuff like that. I believe Tom in one of these, yeah, in this photo actually he's wearing a possessed shirt. Which is kind of cool. Kind of weird considering the era of Celtic Frost that this is, but whatever. There's more of the same shit. Yeah, I mean, this is what I mean by being pointless. Just a lot of photos of just that in the background in blue. It's nice that these were reissued. I've been... Waiting, as I said, over 10 years for these reissues to come since I got into Celtic Frost in 2006. But I just wish that things could have worked out the way they originally planned with Tom's notes. So, I mean, whatever. Now, in conclusion, are these reissues worth the money? Are they worth 32, 33 bucks a pop? Um, depends on what you're after. I mean, if you want a really nice package that's going to blow your mind, um, I'm sure, like, Morbid Tales and Temecatherion would be more than good for you. They're, uh, those are probably the nicest of the layouts and everything. And sound quality-wise, all of them are absolutely fantastic. So if you're going just purely off music, like you should, then, yeah, get these if you're going to actually listen to them. They're amazing. They sound unreal, in my opinion. I think it's some of the best-sounding LPs I have in my collection, and that's beating out some of my Agalock. Now, do I think they could have done some shit better? Oh, yeah. As in keep Tom's notes and keep these official to Celtic Frost? That would have been nice for a change, right? But why would that ever happen? <laughs> Kill me. So, I mean, if you don't mind that these are... Technically unofficial, they're not endorsed by the band. Um, I would pick them up. There's CD reissues as well. I can't comment on those. I haven't picked them up yet myself, but I will because Celtic Frost is my favorite band and I am collector scum and I own Milano Casmata about five times. So if that says anything about myself as a human being, there you go. Um, but yeah, I mean, these are solid. I would definitely recommend them. They sound amazing. Just... There's some really weird shit about them that kind of annoys me, but overall, they're good. Just wish the jackets were thicker, LPs were thicker, and weren't warped. 
Uh, I wish Amazon knew how to pack their shit better. Uh, so as I said, order them one at a time and pay separate shipping if, have, if you have to, if you don't have Prime, because it's worth it to not have to return them. And I just wish I would have kept Tom's notes. That would have just made this the ultimate package, but instead it's kind of weird. But that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Pick them up if you want. They're on uh, Amazon right now, or if you live in England, I think you can order them directly from noise or bmg or whatever they're called now at least they didn't screw up the album art like they did for creator but anyways there's that hope you enjoyed this video thank you guys for watching thank you for subscribing and i'll see you in the next